Welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at exercise three on SOLIDWORKS 2020. We're going to take a look at the functionality with regards to what you see up on the screen here, which is a, a ratchet. And uh, with that, we're going to look at extrusions with draft, some additional filleting techniques, as well as uh, you'll see the extruded text. We're going to actually engrave that text onto the uh, handle. And we'll see it, uh, how to create a plane and offset at the same time. Uh, and then some other additional features. So let's begin. Go to File, New. Make sure part is selected and hit OK. Select the front plane and start a sketch. Now, what we're working off of here, if I go to Google Chrome again, you just want to put in Vertanu one.com it'll bring you to the web page with the instructional manual and SOLIDWORKS basics and I believe it's page 34 yep. 35 and our goal as you saw earlier was to create that ratchet we're going to start with the head now SOLIDWORKS um, over the years, again, I've been teaching this about 22 years, uh, has evolved in such a way that in the past, we always used to want to start with the head or the handle. You wouldn't want to start with the transition section necessarily just because of challenges, but almost any way will work nowadays. I mean, um, there are better strategies than others, but in this case, we're going to stick with the traditional um, and we're going to start with the head. So let's uh, begin by sketching. Go to the little arrow to the right of line, find center line, and off of the origin, make sure you get the little orange dot, click, drag up center line about an inch and a half in height, and then you could hit escape. Now take the line tool, I'll use the fast key for that if you want, and just over here in the lower left side, click and drag maybe one inch line at a slight angle, similar to what I have up on the screen. Take a look, just like that, and then hit Escape. Now notice it's not uh, in any sort of alignment with that origin. You want it a little bit of a diff distance to the left and kind of centered, but you have flexibility. So if it's not exactly like that, don't worry. We're going to go ahead and add some dimensions to it. But before we do that, we want to mirror this across. Now this technique I'm showing you is a technique that will eliminate you having to use the trim tools. In fact, today we will look at trim tools, but normally uh, techniques that were taught in the 80s for other CAD systems where you draw circles to make that head and then you trim and have to make things tangent just isn't the same as now. Now it's much easier and that's what I'm showing you. This is the strategy I'm going to show you here. So I'd like you to apply the strategy for your labs. Actually, there's two labs coming up. Lab four and lab three will incorporate the same technique. It literally mimics this exercise for the head. So uh, pay attention and you'll do fine on those. All right, now I'm just gonna hit escape and then I'm gonna click and drag a fence to surround the two pieces of geometry I drew, the vertical center line and the object line. Release it and now go to mirror entities and it should just mirror it directly across the other side. Now we want tangent arcs based of, off of this. So find this little arrow to the right of arc tools and find tangent arc. With tangent arc, it's very simple. You just get to the vertex of one of the lines, click, release it, move it up and around. Don't stop at the middle, go all the way over and around. If you go directly across, sometimes it transitions to a different type of circle. So just be careful of that. That's why I kind of go over and around. Now let's do the same using that same strategy, but down and around. So click on this vertex here and down and around and connect. And that automatically made those ends tangent from the start points. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be tangent on the end points all the time, unless it's somehow it's an auto relation. But now we have the head of a ratchet, at least the profile. It should turn gray on the inside. If it's not, after you hit escape, then maybe delete the arcs and try putting them in again. There's a likelihood is you just missed the endpoints. Okay, now we're going to go to Smart Dimension. 
Dimension the bottom arc first, and that's going to be 0 0.6. And then dimension the top arc. Click, and that's going to be 0.75. Now dimension both arcs. Now, an earlier, if you're using an earlier version of SOLIDWORKS, for a while it was doing some odd things when you clicked on the arcs. Uh, don't click on any points of the arcs, for say, except maybe the center point. But uh, if you click on the arcs, then you can just drag this to the right. Those of you using earlier versions, like 2018 or 2019, it might actually go to the quadrants up at the top. In that case, just select the center points of the arcs. It's just easier with that version. You later on can actually drag the endpoints of the extension lines down, but that gets a little bit complex from time to time. So anyhow, now that we have this, go ahead and drag it to the right and center that dimension. Click and go ahead and type in 0.75. And then you could go ahead and hit escape. Now notice it's not fully defined yet. What we have to define is just the center point of the bottom arc to lock it into our origin. So hover over the center point at the bottom. See it's a little cross, a little blue cross, get over there, click and hold down the mouse button as you drag it and connect it to the origin. When you get the little bullseye to the right of your pointer, like double circles, release it. And now it should turn black, which means it's fully defined around the outside. And that's what you want. If you didn't get that the first time, try dragging it down and then back up again. Sometimes students are a little too close to it. Um, and it just that slow or short distance movement, it won't automatically activate the automatic relation. So, okay, now that we have that, let's go ahead and go to features, extruded boss. Now we're going to extrude this to prepare it for a mold. And actually, this is a forged ratchet body, so like a drop forging. And a drop forging is essentially a mold that has two halves, kind of like a double ice cube tray, and you're smushing together a hot ingot of steel. And so for that, instead of blind, click on blind here and go to mid plane. And then the overall thickness is going to be one inch. So by going mid-plane, you'll notice it's dividing it a half inch on either side. So the, the sum is one inch. Now, we're going to add draft. And draft is typically used, it's our draft or taper. Some of you know it's a slight angle or that's put on items that are molded. And that's so it could pull out of the mold easier. If you've ever looked at an ice cube tray, the plastic ice cube trays, you'll typically see that there's a, a bit of a, a draft on all the sides. And that's when you um, try and pull it out, it pulls out easily. If it were straight, that ice cube would be a lot of trouble trying to pull it out straight. So for molding, we add draft. So go ahead and click on this little draft icon here on the left and plug in seven for seven degrees. And you could see that it's actually squeezing them down the further they get away from the center. Now, there is a draft outward and that's sometimes useful. In this case, we don't want it. But go ahead and check it one time just to, and look at the change that occurs. You'll see that will not pull out of a mold very easily at all. That's stuck for the rest of its life. So make sure you uncheck draft outwards just so you see it tapered like mine. Okay, go ahead and hit the green check mark. Go ahead now and select the front face of that head and start a sketch. Now remember, if you if this evaporates too quickly, you could go to the Sketch tab up at the top and click on Sketch. Now we're going to learn how to offset entities. With this face still selected, and the way you know it's selected if it's highlighted in blue, it's kind of almost glows. Uh, once you have that selected, you could find Offset Entities. Go ahead and try it. Click on it. And you'll see it will initially offset to the outside. Now, in other CAD systems, you could put negative numbers in and to reverse it. Um, SOLIDWORKS isn't consistent with that. There's some areas you can add a negative, some areas that you can't. In every instance, though, they almost always give you a reverse switch in lieu of a negative number. So see, there's a reverse checkbox under there, and it will flip it to the inside. So always look for the reverse. Very rarely do you have to type in a negative number. That's on older CAD systems typically. Okay, so now that we have the reverse 
checkbox. Let's go ahead uh, and you'll see the inside there. Then, oh, and actually, let's make it 0 0.125. 0 0.125. Hit enter. You can hit enter two times to apply it, and then you'll see it there. Now, you can see the actual dimension appear right here, and it's rounding it to 0 0.13. If you double click on it, you'll see it actually changes to 0.125. To five. Internally, SOLIDWORKS still keeps track of the additional digits, even though it's only set to do two decimal places. If you have something like this where you know it's it needs to be 0.125, while that dimension is in the selected state, at least click on the arrowheads or whatever. Over on the left here, you could set the document precision. So right here, uh, well, that's for tolerance. Um, but basically, uh, let's, let's look at the tolerance right now, and then we'll go to the document precision. But the tolerance precision allows you to go with basic, bilateral, limit, symmetric, min, max, and fit, uh, as well as some other options there. Let's go with bilateral just to see what that does. And you can see it puts the plus and minus on the right-hand side. And let's go ahead and set it down below here to three decimal places and set the plus tolerance to 0 0.00. Let's go with 0 0.005 and the minus tolerance 0 0.007. Those are just examples. We wouldn't necessarily really use those. I'm just so you can see this. Okay. And <clears throat> so there we have that. Okay. Now you do have this option here, same as nominal and options like that. You could adjust for the, uh, the dimension, tolerance precision. So go ahead and hit the green check mark. Now, also, if you want to set that up globally, and I showed this to you the first day, go to the gear up at the top and go to the document properties and find units. And right here, you'll see the length of units. And you could change it to up, uh, three decimal places for this class. But look at that, up to eight decimal places you could change it to. And now every dimension will show as three decimal places. So you, could, you have the ability to type in those tolerance precision uh, inform information right there as well. Okay, now that we have that, go to Features, go to Extrude Cut, and let's set this to a depth of 0.125. Hit Enter and hit the green check. All right, we have a recess now. And I just wanted to share with you that you could also name these features that appear in the feature tree to whatever the, what's more relative than Boss Extrude 1, Extrude 2, and so on and so forth. To do this, cut extrude or boss extrude one. Let's say we want that to be called the head. Click once on it, wait a minute, uh, a second, and click a second time. It allows you to change the text. Go ahead and let's call that the head, H E A D. Now click on the cut extrude one once, wait a second, click a second time, and go ahead and call that the recess. So you could actually name these. Now you might think, well, I didn't need to name those, but remember these, you could have feature trees with thousands of features in it. And it might be nice to highlight certain features so that you could go back to them and find them easily. Now, go ahead and select the floor of the recess and go to your sketch tool right here and go to the circle tool. And the center of the circle is very easy to find because the origin is there. Click on that when you get the orange dot, drag out a circle about 0.3 for the radius. Now, this next one isn't as easy. We could locate it with the quadrant of the circle below it, but to wake up this the true center point of the arc above here, hover your pointer over the arc. Don't click on it, just hover. Let it sit there for a second and look at that. It will appear as a little circle with the cross in it. Click on that now drag it out and intersect this one with the actual other circle. So a radius of about 0.5-ish. Click. Okay, now I want to show you, uh, hit escape and hit the F key on your keyboard. The F key is for fit. Now I want to show you the trim tools. And in this instance, we don't really need the trim tools nowadays. SOLIDWORKS would allow us to extrude these volumes pretty easily. Might be a little bit of extra work. We're going to learn how to do that later um, in another exercise. But I want to show you how to use the trim tools. So find trim entities. Hit the little arrow underneath. Notice there's trim entities and there's extend entities. Pretty obvious what those do. Uh, trim entities actually has a lot 
built into it. It actually has the ability to uh, extend as well. But let's just go to Trim Entities, and you'll see you have these options. You have Power Trim, Corner, Trim Away, Trim uh, Away Inside and Outside, and Trim to Closest. My two favorite, and the ones that using SOLIDWORKS for 22 years, I really feel are the only ones that are truly necessary that I've found, are the top and the bottom ones, Trim to Closest and Power Trim. Every CAD system has Power Trim now, or something very similar to it. The way it works is, watch this, you just hover your pointer over the area that you want nearby where you want to trim, and you just click and hold down the mouse button as you drag, and it looks like it's scribbling here, and whatever you scribble through gets removed. You see how that just eliminated that. Release it. Don't go all the way through because I want to show you the next one, which is trim the closest. Go ahead and click on trim the closest. Now go ahead and just select with one click the geometry you want to get rid of. And there you have it. So there are two tools. You could tinker with the others. Um, again, some people really like those tools. I'm just not a, I just feel they're unnecessary. All right, now I'm gonna to go to Start Dimension. And I wanna go ahead and dimension this bottom arc. So click and drag the dimension out. Let's make that 0.35. Now, technically we want a diameter for that hole. Uh, because it's just easier, because this is giving us a radius. And the reason it gave us a radius is because it's an incomplete circle. There's actually a gap in it, so it's going to give you radius by default. Go ahead and apply this, and now over on the left to change it to a diameter, so that later on if you can recreate a drawing, or create a drawing, it brings up these dimensions that you can retrieve. You don't want to see a 0.35, so it might actually grab the wrong tool, tool excuse me for that. But go to leaders, and right here in the middle, this little diameter, and it will convert it to diameter for you. It even puts a diameter symbol in it. Now you'll see it's 0.7, so it's twice 0.35, of course. Let's go ahead and try that again. Click on the top arc here, drag that out, and make that 0.5. Oh, I'm sorry, no, not 0.5. Uh, look here. That is 0.5, all right and hit the green check and on the left remember go to the leaders tab while it's still in the selected state and click on diameter and there we go we're ready to cut that so go to features extrude cut and make it 0.75 deep we're not going to add draft on that one that's a machine feature so there's no need for draft click anywhere and now we're going to put in some through holes here select this face start a sketch and hit your space bar or you could go to um, control eight which is normal two if you select the floor of the reset of that pocket you could go to normal two and it will align us normal two now you're probably saying well we could have gone the front we could have i just wanted to show you another tool that's all now let's go to the circle tool and at the origin once again it's very easy to find that center and let's dimension that and we're going to make that 0.35. Now we need another circle up top there. So let's go back to the circle tool. Now here's your chance. I'm going to wait a second. And how do you wake up the center point? We learned that just a few minutes ago. Think about it. How did you wake up the center point to the top arc? Okay. All right, let's try it. You just hover over the arc. Let your pointer sit there, and it will wake up the center point eventually. There it is. Click, drag out your circle, and make it a little bit bigger. Maybe make it a quarter inch here, and then hit Escape. I want to show you how to relate those two to be the same size. And we've seen this in one of the labs. So if you've done the labs, you've already learned this trick. If not, here's how. Hold Control down on your keyboard. Don't let go. Select both circles. And over on the left, you should see equal. Go ahead and select equal. Now they're both the same size. However, that, that 0.35 diameter should have a node in it saying two places or two X or whatever, however you dimension or note things. Click on it on the actual, not on the text, but on the actual line, the extension. And right here, you'll see in the dimension text, you'll see the DIM and then you see the greater than symbol at the end. 
parentheses, which is a bracket. Click after that and hit enter to so it scrolls down. Now, rather than just do two acts or two, for two places, let's go ahead and type in two space, capital P L C S period. So two places. And again, that's not the ANSI standard. That's the standard where I used to work. One of the places I worked at at least. And I just wanted to show you how you could put in a custom node if you wanted to for any dimension. Click. And so now we know that both of those share the same size. Let's go to features and extrude cut. Now, did we have to do that last? No, that last step. No, we did not have to. So just be aware that's just showing you how to put notes in. All right. So we went to extrude, rotate this a little bit. And now we know that it needs to go through all the time. So if you remember from day one, design intent, if something's going to go through, Instead of going blind and later on having to change it, if something thickens, go through all to ensure that it's always a through hole. Hit the green check. All right, and there we have it. Now let's put some fillets on here. So go to the fillet tool and set your fillets to point one, which is the default. You could select this edge right here. And notice I'm selecting the edge versus the face because we don't want the inside filleted. There's going to be a cover plate that goes over that. So just this edge right here, click. And the bottom edge right here, click. If you accidentally get a face or something else, just click on it again. And it's like a light switch it turns it off. So very forgiving. Hit the green check. Okay, so there is the head of our ratchet. Let's now move on to putting the transition section in. Now for the transition section, my strategy is going to be to create a plane offset from the top plane that is dragged down about four inches from the, the top plane, which is almost the bottom center of our model. So we're going to learn how to create a plane. And then we're going to draw on that plane a little circle, a half inch diameter, and extrude it up to the head, making the transition. So here's how to do that. Hit your space bar and go to isometric. Control seven is the fast key. Click one time in the feature tree on the top plane and you'll see it right there in, in the model. Now, hover your pointer over the thin blue line. Don't grab the dots, stay away from the dots. Now, if, uh, just hover over that, get ready, hold control. Don't let go of control until I tell you. Now with your pointer over the thin blue line, hold the mouse down, uh, uh, click and drag it down. And you can see it immediately starts to offset it. Uh, it might actually take a minute, uh, depending upon the speed of your computer. But anyhow, now you can release the mouse button and then release control. And over on the left here, we could actually type in an explicit value. Now look at this, these are different ways to make a plane. You have parallel perpendicular coincident at an angle, and we have offset. So we want the offset to be four for four inches and hit the green check. And there's several ways to create a plane. And over the course of this uh, 16 weeks, we're going to go ahead and learn a few ways to do that. Uh, hit your F key on your keyboard and you should see the plane is floating down below. Let's go ahead and now <clears throat> select the edge of that plane and start a sketch on it you'll see the origin projected itself down onto the plane. So now we could go ahead and click on circle and lock into that origin. When you get the orange dot, click, drag out a circle and go to smart dimension and dimension it at a half inch, so 0.5. Now you could go to features, extrude boss base. And if we drag this up, you'll see that pretty quickly we might accidentally intersect into the pocket. We don't want that. We want it to stop once it reaches the part and not and merge with it, but not go past it. So let's take a look at our direction options. So over here where we have blind, go ahead and select that. Um, as we go through them, look for the one that makes the most sense. How about up to next? Go ahead and select it. And you'll see it goes up to the, the body and emerges with it. Now up to surface, some of you might think, well, couldn't we do up to surface? Notice that the surface is split into two surfaces and up to surface is not plural, it's singular. Let's just select only one of them 
and you would have a gap on the other side. So that's why you don't want to use that one in this instance. All right, go ahead and hit the green check. Now, what I recommend doing is hiding the plane that's floating down there. So you could actually right click. You can right click on anything and hide it by just hover over it, right click. And the hide icon is the same consistently throughout SOLIDWORKS. It's always an eyeball and it has a little line through it. Go ahead and select that. Now, no fear if you ever need that plane again, it's right over here in the feature tree. And you could click on it and click on the eyeball to show it again. So uh, we don't want to do that right now. We just wanted to get it out of the way. All right, so now we're ready for the handle section. So let's select the front plane from the feature tree, start a sketch, hit your space bar and go to the front view orientation. Now with your pointer in the center of the screen, you could use your wheel and wheel backwards. So it zooms out a little bit. And if you want, you could pan a little bit. I, I just do it all with the zoom in and out with the wheel. Uh, remember the pan is actually um, control and the middle button. Actually, I never went through that with you, but uh, anyhow, so you just learned something new. Now let's go to corner rectangle. Now, some of you might, who are very savvy might say, okay, I would go with center rectangle, right? And lock it into the center. You could do that, but you would really want to have some sort of center line drawn in advance that it could lock into, or you could have a constraint holding control, select the center point of the center rectangle and the origin. I want to show you a technique that kind of gives you an idea of the strength of sketching and its ability to be manipulated so that we're going to do it a little differently. Go to corner rectangle, move your pointer over here to the right and click and just drag out a rectangle like like that now go to the center line tool remember center lines to the right of the line tool there's that little arrow go to center line and find the midpoint on this rectangle at the top when you find that midpoint click and drag out a line make sure it's vertical about three inches and then hit escape let's add our dimensions go to smart dimension select this line here make that four inches that's the handle Here's the bottom of the handle. That's going to be one inch. So click on that. And this dimension for the center line is going to be 3.75. You might wonder like, hmm, 3.75, why shouldn't it be four inches? So it's right on the edge. Remember there's draft. And if we have draft on it, it gets smaller from the inside out. So we'd have a little sliver holding it on. So we actually want to have it converge into the transition section. So we don't have that issue. And it's perfectly fine to do that. All right, hit escape once you have those dimensions out there. Now, here's the thing. After you hit escape, simply grab, hover over that point at the top of the center line, click, drag it, holding your mouse button down, and get it to the origin. And be very careful, be patient, and make sure it's bullseye. It has to be a bullseye. Otherwise, it's not going to come out right. Release and your handle is now in position. It's centered. If we rotate, you can see it's in the middle. We're good to go. Again, there's multiple ways of doing that. I'm just showing you, I'm trying to give you the most bang for the buck in this case. Go to features, extrude boss space. Now this is going to be, instead of blind, it's gonna be like the head of the ratchet. We're gonna use mid plane once again. And it only needs to be 0.75 thick. Make sure your number lock is on. Mine seems to have been turned off. Okay, now draft on and seven degrees, just like the head. Hit the green check. And there's our handle. Let's put some fillets on. Now fillets, just so you know, fillets, rounds, radiuses, blends, those are all names for pretty much the same thing. What in SOLIDWORKS we call fillet. Fillets, from an engineering standpoint, are used for multiple reasons. Like in the case of a handle, we don't want, we want it nice and smooth around there so a sharp edge won't cut. But also it's for manufacturing, uh, especially when this is compressed in this mold. You want to have radiuses everywhere so that the material could flow. So there's more to it than that. And there's also aesthetics. It just looks nicer in some, in some cases. There's uh, multiple reasons for fillets. 
other than just one item. So let's go to fill it, set it to uh, point 0.1 is fine, select the four sharpest edges. That's the top and the bottom ones. And I'm gonna use my x-ray vision here to get that one on the back side and hit the green check. Now go to the fillet tool again and 0.06. And note you can actually add multiple variations of fillets inside one fillet feature. I like to break them out separately and you'll learn that in the advanced class when we start talking about configurations and such. But um, anyway, let's go ahead and now it's 60. Click on this edge and this edge here, this edge over here, and this edge to help it along there. And now the transition section needs to have fillets on the connections between the head and the handle. So just select right smack dab in the middle of the transition section and automatically fillets everything around it. Go ahead and hit the green check. And there we have it. Now we're going to take a look at, this is, some people really, my students seem to really enjoy this part, putting in your name or text engraved or embossed. The way you do it is, let's say we want to put uh, something on the handle, our name maybe. Click on that surface. Start a sketch. And now hit the space bar. And this one, you want to go to the top view orientation. Oh, not top, I'm sorry. Um, oh, just front. Sorry about that. Okay, now that we're at the front, also let's rotate it 90 degrees. So you could actually hold Alt and hit the left arrow key. One, two, three, four, five, six times. And that rotates in 15 degree increments, counterclockwise, in this case, clockwise. Now, zoom up to that and hit the little arrow to the right of the line tool. Go to center line. First glance, students want to go centered on the center line throughout the whole part. The center line's objective is to rest your font or your text on the center line, not in the middle of it. So you want it offset if, that, if your intention is to try and center this, believe it or not. So that being said, watch what I do. I'm going to go down a little bit near here, click, and I'm not going to touch the edges because I don't want the text to touch the edges. So I'm going to stay clear of those. Now, note you could put dimensions on this line to locate it accurately. I'm not going to bother with that. That's, we're just having a little bit of fun right now. Once you got the center line, hit escape. Now that that center line's there, note you can move it, you can relocate it and shrink it, do whatever you want. But once you have that line drawn, now go to the text tool. Click on text, and it automatically selects line one under our curves because that's what we had selected. If this is if this blue box is just blue, select your center line. You could select edges too, but we don't want it to rest on a tangent edge or a fillet. That wouldn't be good necessarily, at least in this instance. Now in text, I'm going to go ahead and just type in solid works. Now if we want a different font. There are these, the ability to go to bold. I would recommend never using the bold on these fonts. Um, I've had it corrupt the font where the actual geometry is offset and it's no longer valid to extrude. So just be careful with the bold. The italicized works just fine. Um, where you do want to use bold is inside the, the font options here. But notice you could align, center line. So like, let's say I want center line. Or I could even do this. I could full justify where it spreads it out. You have the ability once you go in here to change the width and the spacing. But let's turn off use document font and go to the font button. Now, what we're going to do is select a different font. So um, I think I'm going to go with something very basic. Oops, went too far. Let's see what we have here. They're pretty much the standard fonts. I just want to get past some of these. I'm going to go with Arial. Okay, now with Arial here, you have italics and you have bold. Again, be careful using the bold because it might actually thicken it and geometry might intersect, making it invalid for extrusion. So if you can find a bold version, because you can buy fonts online. There's tons of them. You could even find them for free. 
But um, anyhow, just a little piece of advice there. Now the units or points, we could go with either one. Let's go with units and set, set it to point three seven five and hit OK. And there, it should be pretty close to center. Again, now you could grab that line and drag it up or down if you want. I'm going to go ahead and leave it, hit the green check. And I'm going to go to features. And if you want to engrave it, extrude cut. If you want it raised or embossed, use extruded boss base. I'm going to engrave it. I'm going to go with extrude cut and only engrave it 0 0.02, so 20 thousandths, just a very subtle engraving. Hit the green check and then click. And there you have our engraved text. Okay, now moving on in the training guide, now to get to the labs. And again, this is where you might want to pause uh, to do these labs, but uh, let's take a look at this L3 and there's L3B. I'm going to do L3B first because that's pretty easy. And, and I'm not going to put all the dimensions. I'm going to give you the strategy for creating it, but I want you to put the dimensions in. So when I grade it, if the dimensions aren't correct, you're going to get marked off. But at least I'm going to give you the strategy because I'm going to try and wean off my students by the time uh, the sixth week comes around to where you're doing these labs pretty much on your own. I still give you some uh, help on that, but uh, anyhow. Okay, so here we see it's like a disc with some interesting features in it. There's a through hole, it's one inch, and it overall is one and a half inches in thickness, quarter inch for most of the actual dimensions, except 375 for that tapered cup-like thing. So let's get started. I'm gonna go new, part, hit okay. I'm gonna select the front plane, start sketch. I'm gonna start this off with a center line right at the origin. And then take the line tool and proceed to draw that profile. And it kind of goes off like this. And, and look at this, you could find the angles. Look at that little symbol to the right. It's actually aligning parallel to the other angle. You can see because the other angle is actually highlighted. That's an automatic relationship of parallelism. That's what you want here. Click, drag this across, and let's take a look. Really quick look at that again. Okay, go in like so. Again, parallelism. And sadly, I missed the marker a little bit, so I'm going to just connect there. And I'm going to control select these two lines after I hit escape. For, then control select those two lines and make those parallel. And now for the dimensions, I'm going to go ahead and select this line here to this line here. And that is going to be one and a half inches for the overall height. Um, here, oops, I accidentally selected the point. Uh, let's just clear that, delete that out of there. Oops. Let's just start over with that. Try not to select the points too often. This is supposed to be 0.25, if I recall correctly, I might be wrong. And then from here to here, these lines, and notice I'm getting parallelism. If you select the bottom line, like I've taught you, because there's an angle there, you're not gonna get parallelism. You're gonna get parallelism to the bottom line. That's not what you want. You wanna follow those edges. So in this case, it's gonna be 0.25 here, and from here to here, 0.375. And then this one here, we could go, oh, darn it, selected that little point again. Just hit the escape key and 0.25. And then from the center, so that little point there to the center line, don't click on the points on the center line, drag it to the right. It's gonna be one inch. And let's see what else we need here. Let's go back to the drawing. We see, oh, uh, 2.25 and the angle of 25 degrees. So, smart dimension from this line to this line, 2.25. And from this angled line to 
this line here. That's going to be 25. And let me just verify that. All right, we look good. Now we could go ahead and revolve that. So go to Features, Revolve Boss Space, hit the green check. And you're probably thinking, you never put the fillet in. Watch. Go to the Fillet tool, set it to a half inch, select that edge, and you're done. See what I mean? How this one's pretty easy. If you do it on your own, though, without watching the video, it takes you some time. I mean, it could take hours if you're learning, but you're going to be extraordinary when you're done because you've learned, you will have learned so much. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save that as L, capital L3B. Now let's do this next one. Now I held off doing this next one because this one is tough. Uh, this one's going to take a bit longer. I'm going to go new part, hit OK. Now for this one, you might want to download the document. Remember, there's download, or if you already have it downloaded, you could just bring it up if you could find it. So I'm going to bring up my training guide, and I could go to that page, which is page 43. There it is. And you could write, uh, let's see, let's not get... Oh, there we go. There's rotate. I had to right click and rotate. Sometimes it's in different locations depending upon the browser that you're using. So, uh, oh, that's reload. No, that's not what I wanted. Um, darn it. Okay, I'm not seeing it here. There we go. Rotate. So I'm going to rotate. Um, in this case, counterclockwise. There we go. Now that's using Firefox. It, in Google, it's a little different. Right, so you can see with this one, we have something that's very similar to the head. And I, I told you that you will have two labs. Lab four, which is next week, is very similar to this one. It's uh, with just some changes to it. But this one incorporates almost every single thing we learned in exercise three. It's just, believe it or not, it looks different. It looks similar to the head, though, doesn't it? Okay, so let's see how this is. We, we have a 0.6 at the bottom, a 1.5 radius at the top. We don't have tangency except at the bottom. This does not go tangent, so it looks kind of like an, the uh, Area 51 alien head. So we're going to have to create that. It's two inches center to center. So let's give that a try. Okay, front plane, start a sketch, center line. Go to the regular line, click add that line like so. And then our little trick, we click and drag a fence around both entities, mirror them, use tangent at the bottom, tangent arc. Now for this next one, we don't want tangent. Now we could have left tangent on and did some trickery, but um, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you the, the direct way. Use three point arc. Now a three point arc just click and drag clear across. Now you can inflate it and look at that. There's no tangency though here. So now we get our area 51 alien head. So um, we're going to go to the bottom here and add our 0.6. Uh, we're going to go to the top here, add our 1.5. The distance between both arcs, so click on both arcs, is going to be two inches. The angle here is I think 35 from memory. And then we gotta get that centered. So I'm gonna hit escape here. Grab that, drag it up like so. Oops, it didn't take. Drag it down and back up to snap it. And let's see what we have back on that drawing. Oh, wrong one. All right, so center 0 0.6, 1.5 to 35 degrees. We have that right. Okay. So we're fully defined. We don't need anything more. Let's go ahead and extrude that. Go to extrude boss space, and I believe it's 0 0.25. 
but you know what let me double check that the overall height oh jeez I was way off 0.61 and I do believe there's draft on there too so before I go any farther do let's see typical draft is 16 degrees so I click on this bump that up to 16 hit the green check now this breaks conventional wisdom when it comes to modeling uh, what we're about to do uh, most of the time you put the largest fillets in first and then you work your way down to the smaller ones this one for some odd reason at least in the past let's see if it's maybe it's change if we put the larger one in first sometimes we get an error message so the largest fillet here needs to be uh, 0.5 and i think this is going to error out and we have to put the smaller one in first so yeah as you can see there's no preview so i'm going to deselect that i'm going to click on that and in, in lieu of that we're going to go with the 0.25 on the front so let's change this to point two five and this is just how modelers work from time to time reverse things and test it to see if it works fillets blends radiuses uh if you can't accommodate it mathematically it's just not going to do it okay so there we have that now we go to the fillet again now we can put that big one on 0.5 select that hit the green check all right we're getting there now let's cut out the back select this phase start a sketch we're going to learn how to offset again remember we did that earlier go to offset entities i think 100 thousandths and hit the reverse switch to the inside hit the green check we're going to the features extruded cut we want it to only go according to the print 0.25 and it does have the draft that matches the outside so 16 degrees of draft so we're going to put 0.25 over here and 16 degrees hit the green check don't forget the 16 degrees of draft or else it, it might sever it into two pieces okay now let's put the hole in select this face start a sketch i'm going to go normal two or to the front i'm going to go to the circle and remember we had to locate the center here we're not seeing the center wake up remember the trick is to hover on the arc and then it wakes up click drag out your circle this one's going to be a one inch through cut. Go to features, extrude cut, and through all. Now we have to put in that little rectangle. Remember how we made a handle? This time it's a, a keyway cut. So select this face, start a sketch. And we could use the same technique if you want that we did before draw a rectangle small one and then we'll center line at the bottom this time and let's dimension that it's going to be 0.25 and then this uh, i don't think just as long as it cancels out inside there or we can go two inches just to be on the safe side make sure it makes its way in there okay now we just grab this oops we forgot one dimension it's 0.25 for the width Right, now we could hit escape grab this bottom center line drag it to the origin and we have it located go to features extrude cut it's 0.25 deep and there it is now this does have text and the text on here is wrapped so to add a wrapped text this is the trick select this face start a sketch and go now let's just go to front there we go all right take the we're going to use center point arc for this behind center point arc now center point arc is probably the toughest of all the arc tools because you have to locate three really three points you have to locate the center point and the two ends so locate the center point first then drag this out right about there click and drag it over and around just like so now we need to change that to construction geometry if you leave it solid like it's an object geometry it's going to give you some error messages so the way to change that um, 
You can either go right away over here to for construction and check that. I'm going to do that and hit the green check. The other method, if you forget to do that, you just click on it here. And right here is the toggle switch. It turns on and off, changes it from construction to non-construction. Um, the difference is when it's construction geometry, it's somewhat innocuous as far as extrusions and things like that. Features can't really be constructed from that geometry for cuts or for extrusions, but it's still good for resting text on or for aligning things too. All right, now we're going to go to uh, select it, go to the text tool, and I'm going to go ahead and put in ECC. Or better yet, I'll put in Elgin. Uh, just as uh, at that edu. And just as a side note, all these courses are available if you wanted to take an uh, accredited uh, certificate. We do have a certificate available if you take three courses at, uh, through Elgin. They are available online. Um, there's a couple different instructors that teach it, one including myself. So if you're interested, and taking them, uh, you could take them from anywhere in the world. Okay, so now we have the uh, Elgin.edu. We hit green check. I'm going to go to features, extrude cut, and so it's 0 0.002. And so we have the engraved text. One last thing we want it to be brass. Remember the first day right click on material and you could just click on they have brass right here or you could go to add material and find it and it adopts the properties of the brass now also be aware that not only does it adopt the properties it actually adopts the weight it'll tell you how much this weighs you could go to the evaluate tab go to um, mass properties and it'll tell you like right here the mass 0.7 pounds and all the other information that might, the density, surface area, center, center of mass. Okay, that concludes exercise three.